Hello and welcome to the next Let's Play Towncraft series, a series where we play Towncraft. Well, I don't. I don't get that joy. Lee does. He plays it and he talks to you over the top of it. And I introduce him at the beginning with these little bits. I don't know why I'm even needed, to be honest. Anyway, here's the next Towncraft Let's Play. You know, I'm not sure I said the name of the game enough in that introduction. Towncraft. Towncraft. Town... I'll, I'll just let you get on with it. Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play for Towncraft. This time I'm playing in the map called A Dark Dark Wood, which was actually a reference to an old... I think it was like a joke or a nursery rhyme or something like that that I used to know as a kid. Almost everything I've named in this game is along those lines. It's all something that I remember from my childhood. What this one was from was from a little ditty that went in the dark dark forest there is a dark dark wood and in that dark dark wood there is a dark dark tree etc etc and yeah I don't know then when it gets down to the dark dark whatever inside the very very middle of the thing it, it was a ghost and then you scare someone it was uh, shut up I was a child you, you know I'm allowed to right fine I need to prove anything to you anyway so anyway here I am this was the first level where we introduced pumpkins. We made them specifically for this level. This one was our Halloween update. And what we did was we allowed the pumpkins to serve a couple of functions. First of all, they're another vegetable. But what they also do, I might just grab this quest here before I carry on. I'm a little way off seafood pizzas, my friend. Aha, but very important cotton, grapes. This was also the first level where I decided to make uh, quests and doing things for people mandatory in as far as that is how you gain the basic crops for beginning all your first farms and things. So hopefully it doesn't annoy you all too much, but that was what I decided to do. So we've now got cotton, we've got grapes, we've got berries, wheat, and, up here, pumpkins. So, you can just sort of find them planted around the place. Ooh, I just realized I haven't planted any potatoes yet. That was remiss of me. Grab some pumpkins. Pumpkins are large. They, you only get one pumpkin per tile, and they take forever to grow. But they are quite fun and useful. You can do things like... Well, first of all, you can craft wax into a candle. You can then craft a pumpkin with a candle into a jack-o'-lantern. Terrifying, I know. You can then chuck the jack-o'-lantern on a stick and you can get what I've decided to call a pico-lantern. And then you can use that as a light source. Ta-da! It's not, uh, not the biggest light source in the world, but I think it's creepy and cool. Our artist Corey Attard did a good job there. And that would be the voice of Danny Johnston as that little mumbling peasant Muriel Free. Can I get you six pumpkins? Sure. I accept. How many do I actually have left? Two. Okay, so my first harvest I'll be able to do that quest. So one of the other tricks I played on this level, or in this level I should say, is that I decided to not include very, very basic resources like coal and iron, which is something I've gone on to do more than once since. Now, what I'm doing in this cruel and evil way is requiring, requiring you to trade with merchants and whatnot to grab different materials. And instead of giving you just iron off the bat, I'm only allowing them to sell different iron components like short poles and long poles and things. So I'm not actually going to sell anything here because I don't... Well, all my stuff is kind of still important to me. Now, when I'm building farms, this is just a sort of personal hint, you don't really have to take this, but when I'm building farms, I tend to try and make them not too terribly large, so that the farmers have as much access to them from outside the fences as possible. Once they're fully grown, each tile becomes impassable. And the last thing that we want is to find out that we've got a farmer who is in the middle of a field surrounded by overgrown crops having a hard time trying to get out. So what I'll generally do 
is like I've done up here with the pumpkins, a row of two by five. That will be accessible no matter what happens. So you'll also notice that I'm building on the green areas. That is because the dirt takes way longer to grow on. This was a deliberate move on our part. We wanted to make sure there was actually a reason to build on dirt or grass over something else. And there's also lush grass, which I don't think there is any of in this level, but it's around. So in this level, you'll see there's a little pumpkin there hidden behind those brambles. Oh, the brambles, by the way, are completely impassable, indestructible. They're just there to ruin your day and have a, make you feel miserable. Um, the pumpkins in this level are few and far between. They're in here, but there's not that many of them, so I would recommend going nuts and just grabbing all the pumpkins at the very beginning when you're doing your initial exploration. I always tend to do a bit of exploration at first, grab all the basics and then start settling down to build a town so that hopefully I don't need to wander around too much more. Also it gives me a second to you know, get the lie of the land and decide where I'm going to put my everything. Now this is interesting though. There's no lakes or anything around here. So I'm curious to know how I'm going to be doing that seafood pizza mission. Bear in mind, I built this level last October, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do. I would assume that means that I can trade to get some fish from someone. And I'm still on Pumpkin Quest. So what I might do in preparation for the next merchant coming along so that I can actually buy some of whatever it is they've got to sell. Ah, I was hoping that would be more silver. Generally, if you can see some exposed resources, like you can there with that silver, you can bet that nearby rocks are going to have a much higher chance of also having that same resource. So what I'm going to do is just build a few basic things. Uh, I don't have much, but a really good starting one. Our lead QA guy, uh, Tim Stobo, came up with this one. Just a couple of chairs. They're actually worth a fair deal. They're not too bad. Uh, what else? Some stools. Anything which is a finished product is always worth a lot more than anything which is just a component or a piece of something else. But what I can do as well, actually, I'm sure this will fetch... Actually, I don't know if it will fetch a decent price, but screw it, it's sellable anyway, and it's just something for aesthetic reasons. So that's given me some stools, some chairs, pumpkin. I should place my woodworking table back down somewhere, just for fun. That'll do. Oh, you can see over here, by the way, for those of you who don't know, this is a beehive box. And over here are some birdhouses. They will provide a constant supply of wax, honeycomb, and canary eggs for me which is going to be incredibly useful when I get into baking. I would say having about four or five of each is probably the most you're ever going to need. Chop my way up to a few more potatoes here. There's a reason why I gave people 15 days in this level to make the best town they could. And that's because it is a little bit more slow going, knowing that you've got to wait for a certain crop, like in this case pumpkins, before you can progress to getting something else. And even with all this going on, I still have very, very limited iron. So it's not a difficult map to get a whole bunch of different farms going on in, but it is difficult to make things like swords. Up here we've got a little bit more going on while I'm waiting for my farms to grow. I'll head up here, grab a few more things. Pumpkins are actually worth more than any other vegetables, so it's worth grabbing as many as you can. And fingers crossed, there'll be some more silver up here. Because it is an absolutely great way to get some early cash very quickly. So uh, from what I understand from some of the YouTube comments and from what I've been reading, doing some Let's Plays and things like this is a very 
a very oh hey got some silver a very appreciated thing amongst the YouTube community and it does seem like we, we get a fair few questions about this game usually it's things along the lines of how do I make a shop or how do I craft this or that item and some of them are actually uh, very very fair questions or interesting bugs and glitches but my brother Rowan and I have uh, not stopped working on the game. We released it first of all in Australia only at uh, PAX. They did a PAX Australia for the very first time last year. And we launched it down here and in New Zealand by having it at the PAX show. Put it on sale and then a few months later we released it to the rest of the world. And we are now in the closing few weeks of getting our iPhone version done. Hello merchant. What do we got here? Berries, tool bits, short poles and long poles and gold. All right, cool. Well, I know I've got some silver right next to my uh, my town, so I can get rid of all my silver without too much of an issue. I've already got berries growing, so I can leave that. I'll sell my pica lantern, my chairs, and they're out of money. I made a point of making everyone in this map a little bit poor. It makes it uh, a tricky map to really excel in because there's a finite number of resources and no one seems to have a great deal of cash. So what you end up doing is selling as much as you can, buying as much as you can, and then selling as much as you can again. So I'll get rid of the, t the stools and the chair and that'll give me enough to get some of that gold. I've already got a furnace. It's a good, quick way to make a little bit of money. Just smelt the gold down into anything smaller. Some rings, or if you've got some twine, turn those rings with some twine into a necklace. Although actually, that's a horrible piece of advice. On this level, I would just avoid trying to get a gold necklace because no one's going to be able to afford it. Rings are great because they're valuable, but they come in very small denominations. So. Get four gold rings for one piece of gold. So let's grab a couple of those and a gold crown. It's worth keeping a variety of things going. If you sell too many gold rings, they will go down in value. And the same goes for everything else. <laughs> what else we got? Grapes, berries, I've got both. Thank you very much. The nerve, the cheek. Some rings and I'm back in the money. So in this map it's a pretty good idea up until you've got a whole bunch of your own resources coming at you it's a pretty good idea to try and sell to as many merchants as humanly possible. Anyone who passes by just stop off and sell whatever you've got going. That can be farmland stuff originally. Speaking of farms wooden poles Grab a few of those, and with the tool bits I just created, I've now got enough for 17 bits of fence. I'll use 10 of those up here on the pumpkins. And what that does is it puts tilled dirt under there, and it's going to make those things grow a lot faster. And since pumpkins take longer to grow than anything else, that seems like a solid place to put them. Now I'm wondering. I think it might be about time. I'm going to give this guy a job. Lumberjack. Go forth, ye mighty, and conquer. Now here's another neat little trick which we added, kind of for humor value, uh, which I can't do yet until I trade for some iron bands. We decided we wanted to put a sundial in. And then uh, my brother suggested, well, why don't we make the sundial a portable one that you wear on your wrist? And I said, that's stupid. That makes no sense whatsoever. Then we paused and laughed for a second and then said, yeah, let's do it. We ended up doing some rather interesting things. No, I say interesting. Silly is probably a better word. For instance, did you know you can plant pizzas? Go ahead, try it. Seriously. So in any case, what I was about to show, which I guess I won't be able to do because I lack the iron bands, 
is that if you get some iron tool bits and some iron bands and mix them together, you'll get the sundial. And what that does is puts a permanent time of day counter in the bottom right hand so that you know what time of day it is, which is useful for a few reasons. Probably the most important one is that when it goes from nighttime to sunrise, that's when your employees all get paid. Whether you have the money or not, that's when the money will have to go to them, and if it doesn't, for any reason, then they will just walk out. We, didn't, we wanted to make it so the game didn't have an easy way to, uh, like to lose, per se. You know, we didn't want you to get a game over screen or anything. We wanted the game to be a little bit more relaxing than that. We didn't like the sort of high pressure types of games. But what we did do was make it that if you kind of overreached and you had too many peasants and they started leaving you, all of a sudden you might find that your economy's broken. So it's all well and good to pay someone a couple of gold per day to be your local shopkeeper or tavern keeper. But if you don't have enough goods to keep the shop with plenty to sell, you might be in trouble. And the same thing with the tavern. So you really need all the infrastructure to be there to make it work. Ah, ah there we go. I forgot I did that. Some iron. Some raw iron that I can turn into whatever I like. Chuck it in the furnace. Grab some of those iron bands. Iron tool bits. Meet iron bands. Grab a sundial. Yeah. So anyway, I will leave it there. But this is a dark, dark wood. It's the second of the challenge maps that I've created. The next one, which is about to be released, although it might be, it might actually be up there in the latest update by the time this goes up on YouTube. The next one's going to be Desert Island, which, as the name suggests, puts you on a tropical island with nothing but palm trees and coconuts. Bit of a radical departure from medieval forests, I'll grant you, but... Well, we have giant pyramid-shaped trees, so we're clearly not going for ultimate realism. Anyway, thanks for watching, and enjoy yourselves playing Towncraft.